And I am the collection, oh yes, collections manager of the University of Montana Paleontology Center. It's been a long day of fossil stuff. <laughs> Kelly, what's that necklace? Oh, I'm making it out now. Okay. That's my sweet mod dinosaur necklace. I thought, why is she and wearing an electric guitar? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Blake DePestino. I'm co-host of Beyonds and also co-producer, and I am also um, chief content officer for Complexly, the production company that produces Beyonds. And I work with Dr. Darcy Shapiro on uh, developing the scripts for the show. <coughs> Excellent. So, and I'm an English major, so brace yourselves. Uh, <laughs> fairly well. Today for we are celebrating. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just saying that on YouTube Live, we took an extra second to get in. So I'd just like to reintroduce everyone really quickly. Um, for those of you just seeing us on YouTube Live, hi, my name is Michelle Barbosa Ramirez. I am the newest co-host of PBS Eons. I am a paleontologist, a science educator, and I teach um, geological sciences here in Southern California. I'm Callie, you probably know me, co-host, content consultant, and collections manager at the University of Montana in Missoula. I'm Blake DePastino, co-host and co-producer of the show. Uh, my background is in science journalism, and I work with Dr. Darcy Shapiro on developing the scripts for the show. And I voted today. Yay! And I'm Matthew Carano, and the curator of Dinosauria at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. And uh, I'll be your MC for this evening's event. All right, so today, tonight, we are celebrating National Fossil Day. Uh, we're going to do this by bringing you, our hosts, and you, our guests, face-to-face uh, -face with some of the amazing fossils in our new deep time hall in the Natural History Museum. Now, National Fossil Day is hosted every year officially by the National Park Service and the American Geosciences Institute, but they partner with over 300 other agencies and museums and universities, uh, Smithsonian being one of them. Um, it's an 11-year-old event this year, uh, and it really strives to promote public awareness and the stewardship of fossils and to foster greater appreciation of their scientific and educational value. Uh, now, we at the Natural History Museum, of course, we're still close to the public, but I want you to know that you can still visit the Deep Time exhibit um, by the comfort of your own home and check out our virtual tour. Um, it's really very lovely and very detailed. And until you can come in through the doors, we hope it's a little bit of a substitute. But how is this going to work tonight? That's uh, what we're going to sort of perform for you is a, is a kind of a scavenger hunt, a fossil scavenger hunt. So I'm going to be that MC of that, and that means I've got the clues. So I know what all, what the things are that these folks are looking for. Um, and I'm going to be dropping clues, and they're going to be racing through the virtual tour uh, in a safe fashion. Um, trying to find these objects. Um, the first person to find it will be awarded a point. Um, the host who has the most points at the end of the live stream will be the champion of deep time, uh, which I think is a pretty good title. Um, and that's good because what you win is bragging rights, I'm afraid. I don't have a physical prize for you, but um, you get to be as boastful as you can manage it for the next 365 days as long as possible. Uh, you at home, feel free to join us, hop on the virtual tour, see how you do um, in comparison to our hosts. Um, and let's get started in the rotunda, shall we? All right. See you there. Ooh, I'm so excited. Again, okay, going in. Right. Ready to go. All right, so I thought we'd start with something just just to sort of get everybody on the same page. Um, this is something not too visually tricky. Uh, I'm going to give you the first clue. Um, this belongs to the largest dinosaur in the exhibit. Ooh. Oh, that's All right, let's go to the dinosaur area. Dinosaur yeah. area. There's the T-Rex and the Triceratops. But oh, I see. Oh, ooh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How do I get back there? But there's the, the big the dino. Jurassic. 
Jurassic. Yeah, Hold on a second. No. Is Belong. it? Belong. What is your name, sir? Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I can't think is of it a sauropod? Wait, oh, is it the leg bone? Is it the leg bone? Of... I just said sauropod, Kaylee. No. <laughs> no. Uh, we have two, we... The huge, huge humerus from Brachiosaurus. That's the one. Oh, no. I was looking I'm afraid at the we have, I'm afraid we are looking at two sauropods in this picture, so we do need to be specific. Um, oh. But that was very quick, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm glad that was the first one. So we can work. I'm in <laughs> human <laughs> circulation. So, so I'm using. <laughs> so you're looking at, Come on, Blake. <laughs> you're looking at uh, Brachiosaurus, and if uh, uh, Callie, if you could look up a little bit from that humerus. Um, so this is, although it's just the one bone, um, this is the upper arm bone of a Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus is the largest dinosaur in the late Jurassic period in North America. It's 145, 150 million years ago. Um, not a common dinosaur, we don't have a lot of them. This, this specimen was found by Eddie and Vivian Jones, who were uranium prospectors, 1953, donated to the museum in 1959, and it's been a touchbone specimen since then. So, so when you come visit, you can actually touch that specimen, though please be careful anyway. Um, but what I wanted you to notice is if you look at the dinosaur behind it, which is Diplodocus, that upper arm bone in Diplodocus is quite a bit smaller. So you think about how big Diplodocus is, it's about a 15-ton animal. And you see that upper arm bone there. And then you look at that bone in the Brachiosaurus. You're looking at Brachiosaurus as something like a 70-ton animal. So a, a real difference in size. And as big as Diplodocus looks like, it's really not that big as dinosaurs go. Wow. Right, let's, so let's that's, that's the real oh, bone? Sorry, that's, that's the real that's bone. The real Wow. Yeah, so it's it's got a little bit extra shellacking on it, just so it can. Do <laughs> um, but it has been touchable for about sixty years, so it's 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 done pretty well. Yeah, that does that looks pretty good for sixty six wow. million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, let's, anyway. uh, let's just let's try another let's try another one here. Um, okay, this is a. Uh, an animal that is found near its more famous sail-backed cousins. Ooh, Ooh. okay. Ooh. Heading uh, over to the okay. Permian. Permian, Permian. Yes, so Permian. Demet oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. So Okay, I see him. Wait, Let's what was the clue him. again? Near. So he's a near Dimetrodon. It is, and it is in a the same position. It was in, but it was dug up. Oh, oh, is it the early oh, synapsid? The, is it? Oh, I can't Ophia, read it. Oh, oh yeah. Ophia sodon. Oh, it's so blurry. Do, do, we, do we split the points here? That was pretty close. Ophia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's called Ophia. It's called Ophia Gnome, and you're you're looking at the right. You're looking at the right uh, thing. Well, Blake's not, but you you two are. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't pronounce it very well, so I'm willing to yeah. give up that point. <laughs> so it looks it looks sort of just kind of like a almost like a snake there, and it's 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 in what we call the death pose. Uh, so those mm -hmm. are those bones are connected as they were uh, in life and death, and as it was excavated. Um, that's not too common, and in this case, we, we didn't want to disrupt that and take it apart, but it does also tell us some of the story of the animal's last moments. Um, so in this case, you know, the animal died. There was uh, some amount of decomposition, maybe some, some drying out of the animal, but not enough that um, it was the bones were disassociated. Uh, certainly nothing came along and made a meal of it, although it, in the exhibit it looks like that might be, that might be changing. Um, <laughs> and so in this case, this, um, this animal escaped recycling. Most of us get recycled. Um, <clears throat> and this is how you win the fossil lottery, is you escape the <laughs> recycling. Um, and so uh, it's really a, a beautiful fossil. It was actually prepared maybe 30 years ago and then uh, never displayed to the public. And so this is the first time it's, it's been in an exhibit. What Where was it found? Exhibit? Uh, this is from Texas, and uh, this whole case is full of animals from Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, oh, the Permian <laughs> Basin, right? I've heard of that. Permian Basin, yeah. exactly. Um, and Demetra is very, here. 
very common animal, um, but these other ones are much less so. So Opie and I rarely, uh, rarely see in the exhibit. So uh, just a score update, we've got somebody from our team, Nick, thank you, Nick, is keeping score from a, for us. And he went ahead and gave Michelle a point for that um, answer too. So it's Callie two, mm. Michelle one, Blake zero. <laughs> well, the white thing would have been not to point that out, but. <laughs> All right, let us move on, shall we? I, this is, this right. is the, the fossil speaking through me. I have wings, oh, okay. and I can fly, but I am neither a bird nor a pterosaur. Oh, Ooh. I was like, dang it, Ooh. I know what it is. And then there was a bat okay. somewhere. Bird? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's where really was that little bat? Wait, somewhere up in the Cenozoic. Uh, Cenozoic, where are we? Cenozoic, age of human, so ice age. <laughs> Giant ground sloth. Where is this? I wonder if the people playing along with us are shouting because they already found it. They're like, obviously yeah. it is. Tell is me. The second clue is you're not looking for a fossil. You're looking for No, a I just found the bat, but he's a fossil. I know. I just, uh, I'm not looking for a fossil. Oh, looking for a oh, 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 sh oh, shoot. I know. We're all in the wrong place. I, yeah, I can't hear you. Uh, no, not, Matt, can you repeat looking the for? clue? So the, set, the next clue is uh, um, you're not looking for a fossil, but a model. A model. Yes. Okay. okay. Am I looking at the coitus dragonflies? <gasps> Callie! No. Oh, clue. man! It, no. <laughs> that no. would have been great. Oh, the, third, oh. the, first clue, the first clue is I have bones and I can help. Oh, yeah. Dang it. Oh, wow. The, the third clue is flying is all about moving in three dimensions. Don't get okay, stuck just straight ahead. Of okay. oh, something oh, 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 that has oh. bones oh, oh, and it okay. flies. Oh man, this is tricky. What is up there? Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? All right, I'm gonna start looking up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is anyone dizzy yet? Is this oh, is yeah. this an there owl up here in this in this rainforest area? Who are you, sir? Someone is quite close. Oh my oh, god. I'm not at liberty to somebody. Me? I'll give you a hint. Somebody was quite close. <laughs> no. God darn it. I can't tell what it is. Let's see. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, and oh some people gosh. are just on the wrong side of something. Okay. All right. Okay. Somebody okay. is very close again. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, so, um, oh, okay. so what is it that up there? Bones. That's what I'm it's, saying. It's a thing. Like a sugar glider or a <laughs> flying fox. I'm just going to name mammals that fly. It, 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 um, yeah, well, it, is, it, is, it is indeed. It is indeed a bat model. It is. All right. What is your name? Is it a primate oh, okay. that's up there in the tree? Oh, well, there is a primate in the tree, but the. Uh, uh, it's a oh, bat. Oh, okay, so I have to, I have to so name. Bad. There it is. It's I got see it. it. Oh, Callie no, don't make it. Or maybe <laughs> Michelle got it first when you guys are looking at it, that little bat. There. Yeah, what yeah. is its name? You don't have to give oh. a name. You just have to find it. Oh, oh then well, I just this, it, right? this little bat guy. Yes, that's the one. So Ooh, that's a model of a bat see. called Icaronicterus. <laughs> I, it was oh, Onyctonycterus. Yes, yes. yes. You found the fossil. No. Early. Okay. Wait. I wait. Didn't I find that first? She named it. But <laughs> is it this right here? No. Nope, you better hope the producer side with you. It's <laughs> higher up than where you're pointing, Blake. Oh. All the way up, and it's out to the edge of the tree. Yeah. If you look towards the windows, you can see it. Oh my sort heavens! Of highlighted. Yes. Matt. Uh huh. Matt, that's you're playing dirty pool. <laughs> Man, that was a that was a hey, good one. When you go to the city, you gotta look disagree, everywhere. Like... <laughs> <laughs> look at that little yeah, so guy. This is, uh, this is one of the oldest fossil bats. Well, that's a model of one of the oldest fossil bats. You saw the fossil in the other case. Um, and so these. This is 10, 15 million years after dinosaurs went extinct. Mammals have already started to evolve into the mammals we know today, even though there are, of course, many kinds that we wouldn't recognize. And uh, bats are one of them. You would recognize that fossil as a bat. You was flying around and say it was a bat. Um, 
And part of this is because this is a time of global rainforests and up in these rainforest canopies, a lot of evolution is taking place. Primates are up there, as you saw, um, bats are another group, snakes. Um, there's lots of fruit, lots of insects, and so there's just this whole kind of diversity explosion way up in the canopy. Um, I have, I, it's, it's, that was really good. I, I have, Amazing. it's not a question, but it is a statement from our chat. Um, Rye Bolanger said, Blake is aggressively social distancing in the virtual museum. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your commitment, Blake, but that strategy yep. is not working out. I'm just doing my part. Go hang out with Charlie Dar Darwin for a little while. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit and um, have a nice drink with next to Charlie. With next to Charlie. All right. <laughs> next clue. All right, let's go. I'm off, at, I, I'm off at a corner with all of my arthropod relatives. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, let's get over to the Carboniferous. See what's up. Yeah. yeah. Carboniferous. Carboniferous. Arthropod world. relatives. Is it? Okay, in a corner. Ooh. Yeah, is it uh, the giant millipede? Oh, crap, what's its name? The millipede uh, isn't in a corner. Yeah. But it's yeah. true. I, I, I'm, I'm just giving you general directions, so uh, oh, okay. no. oh. closer to where you want to be there. Um, second clue is I'm more than 300 million years old, but you might recognize me just by looking. Ooh, uh, is, is it, 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 is it? Is it the coitus dragonflies this time? Mm -mm -mm. No, but I, I appreciate that you're making sure we all see that. Yeah. <laughs> just just in case anyone in the live it's after eight o'clock it's after eight o'clock it's just <laughs> this is the oh, birds man, and I the can't... bees or the third dragonflies clue. and the dragonflies okay third, third clue. clue was i poisonous quite likely millipede oh. no. no i already said is it the scorpion hmm. i can't read its name Bingo. it's the scorpion yes yeah. kelly damn this is my Jam, you guys. Ancient life is my jam. <laughs> <laughs> so the big oh, oh, wow. Okay, I, I have to, before we get into this, it's a it's another uh, viewer question, but it's super cute. Uh, Mr. Glenn Jen John, <clears throat> let me try that again. Mr. Glenn <laughs> Johnson, when do the animals come alive? After midnight, right? <laughs> ah. <laughs> off the air. I'm not allowed to say more than that. Oh, yeah. That's confidential. Smith Proprietary knowledge. knowledge. I mean, you know, we're not in the building. We're still closed. I have no idea what's going on in there at night. I was standing right in front. It literally would have stunned me. I was standing right in front of it. Oh, yeah. Let me see. So, uh, the cool thing about this fossil for me is like you just look at it and you think it's a scorpion. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's 310 million years old and it doesn't matter. Um, so it's called Eoscorpius. Great name, right? Um, and this whole case is is, is uh, ancient insects and arthropods, um, Carboniferous period. And it really shows that, you know, insects have been around for almost 150 million years at this point, And all the major kinds of insects, or many of them we would recognize are there. There's just, uh, um, things like cockroaches and bristle tails. And then there's other related arthropods we would know, like centipedes, millipedes, uh, horseshoe crabs. Um, and this is started well in advance of the, the vertebrates, the, our, our ancestors coming on land. So by the time we're starting to diversify, our relatives are, these things are well, well ahead of us. It's how so old cool. Are oh, yeah. The, Go ahead. The, yeah, how old are Go. the arthropods in this cabinet here? Because if we look to the left, the carboniferous arthropods are huge. These guys are smaller yeah. than I expected. Yeah, so there's a, there is an enormous variety. The, 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 we, we obviously wanted to show the larger ones. Um, but so that's an enormous millipede for pleura. Um, and there's this open question about how you get these gigantic arthropods. Um, there's some thought that you, know, you have different oxygen and carbon dioxide levels, and maybe that promotes that. Or maybe just the fact there's not that many things around to eat them um, might also promote that. Um, but still, most of them are small. So you get the big ones, but most of them are, are not big. All right, let's, uh, let's stretch our legs a little bit. 
Uh, okay, so this is an example, uh, a, a, a rare example of a fossil that shows the direct ecological connection between species. Ooh. Ooh. So maybe something with soft parts because it's rare. Oh, I think I know. Oh, no, uh, why did I tell you that? <laughs> no, no. Is it uh, uh, insect predation on leaves? So that's that's that would fit the bill. Is that what I'm looking for? Um, okay. We're looking for bones. Okay. And we're looking for bones that look damaged. Bones that look. Oh oh oh. 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 Um, okay. And then oh, healed the, again. Is it the T Rex and the uh, trike? Trike. This is. Hmm. Oh yeah, that shows. Okay, okay. So it shows, shows evidence of a so then relationship. The, I'll give you a little more of a location clue. Okay. So when you find this, you're going to be looking at not one last meal, but two last meals, and a good reason oh. why you don't swim after you eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? let's go to the ocean okay. times. Yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna go. What is what? happening? I I wonder oh I wonder Maybe if we're it, in the Triassic? I'm like so would this oh, be considered oh. a trace fossil? Yeah, I'll ask. Okay. <laughs> well <laughs> in, in this case well, no, but that would be another possibility. I feel like um if you averaged where Michelle and Blake are, you'd be closer. Blake, where are you? <laughs> well, I know. I was like, wait. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in the new gene. I'm the new oh, gene I'm ocean. in the Triassic because I was thinking, you know, oh, big geez. ocean predators. Triassic. I see the word ocean renaissance. But uh... So I would say another clue is that uh, for many, um, you may often hear these animals referred to as uh, dinosaurs, but none of them are actually dinosaurs. Oh okay. my gosh! So what? Okay. Megafauna. Oh, okay. One of y'all. It's one of y'all, like a plesiosaur oh, or a pliosaur. It's not. It's it. It's not the mummified bison, is it? No. I okay, think, man. Uh, if someone's calling a mummified bison a dinosaur, we got some talking to do. Yeah. We still, we yeah. still, we still have uh, the clue about swimming. Swimming, okay. Right. It's gotta be yeah. swimming. There are serenians around here. Can we hear the clues again? Sure. Now that we're okay, so this is um, it's it's a it's a fossil that shows ecological connections between two species. Ecological connections. It shows bones that look damaged. It shows last meals, mm -hmm. and it has to do with swimming. Okay, I'm looking at serenians here. Well, and so I will still say that if you average where Michelle and Blake are, you will be closer than either of them is right now. Oh, <laughs> Michelle, where are you? I'm in the Triassic. You're in the Neogene? You're in the, Michelle's in the Jurassic. I'm in, oh, I'm in the yeah, Jurassic. I'm in the and oh, Blake okay. is in the Neogene. So split uh, or, or maybe run, it, run at each other. I have to walk millions of years. Okay. Oh! Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to the Cretaceous Seas, you guys, because it has the word C in it. But I still don't see what I'm looking for. Uh, way over here. So, how do Michelle, I get should back? do a 180. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Where are you? Oh, no. I see you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, oh. Asteroid impact. I, think, I think we've lost. I think we've lost Cali, so I'm going to focus. On <laughs> I know. Oh, right. I, I'm trying to find yes. the. the okay. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. Seidel, what are Michelle, you? and Blake are so. Blake is so close. Oh so my God. Close. Okay. Um. Um. um see. He's kind of looking at. He's kind of looking at. Oh, I just oh, don't know what oh, I'm looking at. Big fish that you can see the fish that it ate inside oh, of the fish. Oh, back to this. Yeah, like fish within a fish. I don't think does that one have a fish inside of it. Yeah, so there's a fish inside. I, I think I think you get a half a point for that. Uh, Blake is still closer to the right answer. He's so oh close. My he's just God. not actually finding it. If I, I could just reach I can't tell what I'm looking at. So it's not oh my a gosh. fish yeah. in a fish? I want to like, jump out of my screen and see where 
<laughs> Zoom in, Blake. I'm Blake! To... Where are you, Blake? What is he looking at? Man, That's the it... one machine. Oh, is it this dude? <gasps> oh, I see. In the stomach. What? There you go, yeah. right there. Yeah. Zoom yeah. all. Yep. Oh, you have no. it, Michelle. That little. That little this guy. Box. It's this guy. Yeah. It's who are you? Is this a? Yeah. That's a. So if you look thing. in the box, if you look in the box on the rail. Mm hmm Michelle. Oh, it's a mosasaur. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you it look has at that a box with those... in its stomach. Yeah. Right. And the plesiosaur. Cool. And the plesiosaur eight also has something in its stomach. No. That's the bones here in that in the, box. This is like oh, triception. Exactly. Whoa. It's like rushing, rushing nesting dolls. All right, where are you guys? What? Okay, this is really cool. Kelly, you got to share. jump out so you can see what we're looking at because this is Kelly's at. crazy. Okay. Wow. So Man, here I am is... so hungry right now. <laughs> okay. You could eat a that... whole please eat for? Three animals, two meals, That's one fall. Got it. So whether you eat a whole one or pieces off of it, a dead one, uh, hard to know. Tylosaurus. Yes. Yep. And if you and that box there has some bones in it, and those bones are pretty. Basically, they've taken an acid bath, so they're in pretty bad shape. Mm -hmm. so wow. Very cool. Box. I was thinking of regurgitite, and I was like, do they have any regurgitites? Like, do they have? Like, I was thinking. <laughs> you know, of, like, I, I would. Like, I wish we did. I wish we did. I thought it was the, 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 the too at first. Yeah. The fact that I think Very it's cool. half credit because it is it is also that even though it's only one last meal, but I think that's a, that's a pretty fair argument for some credit. All right, that's good. Wow, nice okay. job, everybody. That got so pretty wait, heated. Got wait, the, who got the point? Yeah, was that oh, Blake? Uh, or we Michelle? might need an outside judge on that because uh, Blake and Michelle were neck and neck. And all right, I'll all let right. Nick make the decision. Nick, We're all it's friends. on you. Send me the scores, and I will let everybody know how we're doing here. And I, I would also the, like, oh my god, the gastric, or whatever the no, no, no. So Blake does have a claim to to fame here. So we practice this in the Human Origins exhibit, and Blake won. He wiped the floor with us very much. <laughs> yeah, so you're saying he, you don't want to give him any extra advantage. Uh, the judge. No, I'm, he got I'm not be holding back because of the last round, but that's what you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not judge, like a head fake. <laughs> uh, our judge Nick gave a, a point to Michelle and Blake. So Blake, you're officially on the board now. Nice. Yay! <laughs> so you're right. welcome. All right, let's uh, let's thank you, Michelle. Move on to something a little easier to see. This is something you'll find high off the ground in the tail of the longest animal of all. Tail of the what? longest. The ground. What? High off the ground? The tail the of the longest? longest. Uh, well, I'm going to start Arola? perusing. Wait oh, a no. second. Wait a second. Wait no, no, no. a second. Yeah. So, Kelly, we can't gotta... see your uh, screen. We... Oh, I'm not sharing yet? Oh, no. OK. <laughs> Pause. We only see concentration don't, face. Don't keep <laughs> Longest <laughs> animal. Okay, I got it. Now. We're good. Okay, wait. I think I know what this is. Um, I don't know how to get yeah. to the. Ah, is it? I'm not. Is it the I'm tail? I'm not even sure what time period. Feeling? So the tail of the longest animal in the hall. Am I looking at it? Got to be a sauropod, right? Wait but it's minute. next to the longest animal you said, right? No, no, no. It's in next the to the tail. tail. In the tail of the in longest the tail. animal of the hall. In what? the tail of the longest. Yes. Okay, so there's. So there's that one. How do I get? Where's this guy's tail? How do I get to his side? All right. Here's your face. Oh, here's the tail. Butt. Here's the tail. Oh, it's I don't just. Know how to get there? There's nothing in the tail. So um, another <laughs> clue, once you're looking at the tail, is uh, you want oh. to see, uh, yeah, um, you want to look a little in closer the tail. to the, uh, the animal's butt. All right. Um, and so another clue is that everything might seem normal, 
but not everything is actually as it should be. Oh, is oh, there going to okay. be a coprolite here? No, that would be awesome, that... but no, there's no coprolite there. I was about to give you guys so much kudos. We have we have a coprolite oh, exhibit, but it, you can't get to it on the virtual tour. Believe me, it's there would have been coming a out question of a foot. <laughs> Let's see. I feel like okay. that it has to be like some like oh something like a parasite or or. Uh, so uh, this is an example. There's another clue. Another. This is an example of uh, one of several examples of less than perfect health in our dinosaurs. Oh, is it a trace fossil? Like there's a bite mark in there. <laughs> or uh, like a lesion from an infection or something. I just can't get to the. This, yeah, it must the, be the sauropod, right? But that how do I not know how to get? That has to be the sauropod, right? That has to be that sauropod. Yeah. Now there is a okay. spot on the other side that you can get to. Oh, oh, that... oh okay. Let's try Let's... walking. Oh, around. I see. Okay, okay. Walk I got an around. idea. Don't don't wreck this feeling I'm getting here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you can you can get into that space. All right. I wonder if everyone at home yep, is dizzy now. So Michelle is doing the right thing. All right. Oh, dang. What do I spy? Yeah. My little eye. Follow your way down the tail a little bit. Uh, you, I can't so even get there. To, let's let's see. see. That one doesn't. Does that one say anything? I'm trying to look for the labels. Oh, that's a smart idea. But. Man, these bones look. Look what? There's like a T-shaped bone. Yeah, bingo. So you found <gasps> What? Really? What does it mean? Yeah. What does it mean? So oh, you, so, I see there it. There you go. So, in fact, to the left of that as well, Callie. There's another um, one. Yeah, like. See all those knobs down. on the bones down there? The swollen yeah. Yeah. Bones, of bones. So those bones are have fused together. Oh, oh that's yeah. interesting. Right and there. That, and, and that T is actually a ligament that has ossified and turned to bone. So probably that section of the tail was stiff instead of wow. flexible. Um, and they, they grew together. It's, we can't really tell if there's an injury or a disease of some kind. Um, but certainly the animal had that problem for, for some years for that oh, much wow. to happen uh, to the bones. That's yeah, life without medicine is rough. <laughs> Let's see. Let me or jump on here real quick. Real quick. All right. That was well done. Um, yeah, very good job, everybody. And then I have a question. Um, let's see. Lumpy Space Prince. Great handle there. Uh, what is Dr. Carano's favorite fossil? Hmm. <laughs> so favorite fossil in the hall, favorite fossil in the world. I'm going to answer the first one. Um, I have like a short list of favorites, but there's a little dinosaur on the, <laughs> on the, behind the T-Rex called Stegosaurus. It has a little dome on its head. Um, and we, we posed it scratching its face um, just oh. because, because they almost do that. And I just, I just, it's my favorite. It's very charming. Uh, fossil. So I hate his love for Sally. That's pretty good. That's a cute Is that one. Mr. Mr. I... Prince or Mr. Space Prince? Let's see. It was Lumpy Space Prince. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was really All good. Right. That was a that was a tricky one. Yeah. You know, All good. right. So let's uh let's get out of this section. Let's say number one. Okay. So this is uh the one place where you can see how humans fit into the tree of life. Ooh, oh. all right. Off we go. Oh, man, here we go. Humans, humans tree of life. Humans, humans, humans. humans? Blake, this is your moment. I know, Blake. How many moments no do I get exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, where's the little... Uh, uh... Now, even though humans are late appearing in the story, this actually uh, is told near the beginning of the story of Life on Earth. Mm. Uh, what now? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh so I even see. though humans show up late in the story for real, 
you will find this near the beginning of the story of life on Earth. Okay. 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 Your body. All right. Time. Can we get that clue one more time? Yep. So the first clue is this is where you'll find humans and how they fit into the tree of life. Hmm. And even though humans show up late in that story, you'll find it near the beginning of the story of life on Earth. Hmm. Okay. Here's so. Hume's gallery. Mm-hmm. Life on land. Okay. Tree of life. Is it this man? Yeah. And so where the third you? clue. <laughs> and someone is someone is very close. Is it this third, tree of life that's yeah, over by the, the fossil lab? The, the third clue is is we are all one big happy family. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh man! Here's, keep zooming. The little you are here. Is it this map? Or the... That's it. Michelle found it. Oh. Woo! Mm. Oh, wait. Oh. Uh, so if this you guys little... come on over to the fossil lab where it says, what is life, right? We oh, see the, the origin of all lab. life. What is life? Oh, there it and is. Then, the whole tree of life until you are here. Yeah. So this tree of life is different than I think most of us get to see because it actually more accurately shows us that almost all life on Earth is microbes. Yeah. So the fundamental variation in life on Earth is really about things like metabolism and biochemistry. And most of the things we recognize like plants and animals or you know, fungus or something, that's just that tiny branch on the bottom right. Um, but everything else on here is more different from us than we are from plants or mushrooms. There are things that you know eat sulfur or live in super high temperatures or at the bottom of the ocean, and, and they're just really, really distinct in terms of evolution, although we all share a common ancestor. Um, and so all the big stuff that we're familiar with is really just a little tiny segment. All right. Very cool. Let's see, oh, well yeah, well done, Michelle. Uh, Nick, I'll need a score update from you. And while we wait, uh, from Facebook, I have another uh, question. Victor Hurtado asked, what has been the most challenging episode to shoot for eons? Hmm. Well, I have to say most of our episodes are fairly easy to shoot because we shoot on a green screen. So there's not like a lot of, <laughs> you know, props or anything. Um, Probably for me, at least, like when we went to the Museum of the Rockies and all of the spaces that we were shooting in were like little offices and there had to be like eight people in the office and I'm wearing like my business suit and it was so hot. <laughs> and then we have like a bunch of Kino lights. And um, so for me, that was probably the most Cramp challenging. Space. Cramp space. Of no help. Yep. <laughs> We did shoot an episode in the deep time hall with those under construction, which was interesting because that was right. like a literal night of the museum experience that we came in after hours um, and we had to work among the construction equipment and stuff. Um, that wasn't typical. I mean, we don't shoot on location very often uh, mm -hmm. and it was just a thrill to be there, but there were a lot of moving parts to like logistically making that happen. Yeah. The hardest um, shoot for me has been all of them because we haven't <laughs> been able to shoot. We were supposed to start shooting in March, everyone. Something yeah. else happened. Yeah. End of the world. Jeez. All right. <laughs> score update. Callie, five. Michelle, three. Blake, one. Yes. On the board. <laughs> On the, the, board. the perfect The perfect number, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not too all right. Just nice. Blake's number one. <laughs> Another way to look at it. <laughs> All right, let's move. Let's move ourselves out of here. And uh, this next, this next uh, specimen is something that uh, lived alongside T. Rex, and oh. can be found near it, but not too near it. Okay, so it's not getting eaten. It lived with T. Rex. 
So some sort of Cretaceous being. Oh. Who is, are, are we looking for a vertebrate? We are. Are you looking for the only biped in the neighborhood? Oh. oh. Uh, oh, 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 I'm looking. Is it I'm, it's ornithopod? It's a, it's a, Wait, is it? No, no, no oh, is it? That's the the <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a referee's call on that. They're both correct. <laughs> <laughs> that could almost have been done in harmony. Oh, oh, no, yeah. I think we were in perfect harmony when we said <laughs> Thescalosaurus. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Thesaurus neglectus. It's actually Aww. another one of my favorite uh, animals here. I like it because it neglectus is the name of the species because <laughs> it was discovered in 1891, but nobody unpacked it for 20 years. Of course. And then they found this beautiful dinosaur in the box. Like um, a dream. Yeah, exactly. And uh, wow. it's nice. It's a, it's a plant-eating dinosaur. Um, they're they're not. Super common, but uh, they're they're pretty well known these days. If you look closely at the sort of the chest area of the dinosaur, there's these gray. Um, kind yeah. Of, they, they look like plates or, or something. That's um, the cartilage between the ribs in these dinosaurs seems to have been ossified, partly turned to bone while the animal's alive. And wow. it's not clear there must have been some functional use for that. In birds, it's, it helps with the breathing muscles, um, but we're not sure what it is in vessel source. But uh, there are a bunch of specimens and they all seem to have it. And other dinosaurs don't, even in the same environment. Um, so it's, it's something unique that we have yet to, yet to uh, interpret. Well, that's crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't even know that. I did not know that. Um, yeah, I thought it was just like sediment that didn't get, I don't know, prepared out of it for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, well, the first one, that's what everybody sort of thought, and then they kept finding more of them, and it sort of oh. piqued your interest at that point. So it might have been a lot of them that had that destroyed inadvertently. That's the, that's always the worry when you find something really special, and then you're, you know, what about the 10 that somebody found before and didn't, you know, didn't know to look Oh, for? my gosh. I think about that all the time with the Victorian fossil hunters. Like they were so concerned with the bone, getting the T-Rex bones mm -hmm. out of the ground, get them out of the ground, get them back to the museum. Like I'm yeah. wondering if we had feathers on T-Rex and mm -hmm. somebody just obliterated it because they yeah. weren't looking for feathers. They were looking for the yeah. giant bone. Well, Bob and Brad did use dynamite, so. Yeah, they used dynamite, exactly. Um, ooh, I have another question. It's from Facebook. Uh, J. Gus, J. Gus Aguilar asks me and Blake, but I'm going to add Michelle to this. What is your favorite episode of Eons? Oh, wow. That's a good one. That is a good one. I'm always, I really like uh, your place in the primate family tree. I have ignored human evolution my entire journey through. <laughs> <laughs> I just end it Same. with like mammoths and I'm like, oh, and then some hairless apes were walking around. And then boring. Um, yeah, boring. It's boring. But when we did your place in the primate family tree, the end of that episode, when we walk you through all of the groups that we belong to, it's like, it's just this really, it's like almost emotional at the very end of that episode. And it, it rises to the top every time I get asked this question, is, is your place in the primate family tree? I really like that one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I know the one I've watched the most is The Brief History of Geologic Time. I use it for teaching and I use it when I wanna like convey to everyone how paleontology is more than just dinosaurs because dinosaurs are so cool, but like, have you even heard about all the other weird things that used to live on Earth and like how long, like the, the concept of geologic time, right? Just all of like basically macroscopic life on Earth is like this just eh, like less than 20% of the entire history of all of Earth. It's mind boggling. So anytime I can sort of show the actual scale or that concept of time, I love that. Blake? I have to say that... Darcy, who works on the scripts with me, Dr. Shapiro, we often like to take the long view and she is surprisingly philosophical about her approach to these scripts. And we both look for moments of poetry in them. One of my favorites is The Trouble of Trilobites, which is in the first season. 
just because it's basically about how we try to kill these things five different times and they persisted. Um, But it's sort of like, it reinforces one of the themes of the entire show, which is that change is the way of all things. Nothing lasts forever. Um, Doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are, how persistent you are. It's just going to happen. And another one is um, the Neanderthal that, I forget what it's called, Neanderthal that like, Taught us taught what it us means to be you. human. Yeah, yeah, that one's good. What it means Shanadar to one, Shanadar nine. I forget what the specimen was. Uh, Shanadar and, one through twelve. You know, <laughs> who had been injured and was had been so injured for so long, you could tell by his remains. They obviously had been cared for by his community, and it's so rare that you can extrapolate things like behavior and intentionality from the fossil record. But it really opened up what I think is a really lovely discussion about. What, is, what does it mean to be human? Right. So Blake right. and Darcy, poetic and beautiful. I come to join Callie's pun team. So you got someone <laughs> in your corner now. <laughs> all right. Well, you got all all the puns. Knows, I think is the lowest form of expression, but that's, that's Whatever. fine. Puns are it's brilliant. the purest <laughs> form of expression. Thank you very They're much. The best. Uh, I think we've got time for maybe one or two more hunts. You guys ready? Let's go. Right. Okay. So Let's it's, box, it's, it's mathematically impossible for me to catch up. Okay. So this next object is standing tall, much as it would have 360 million years ago. Ooh. Okay. 360. Let's go back there. So maybe Let's go back. Oh, wait. Yeah, Permian or Carboniferous? 360 would be Carboniferous. Let me just jump back to the Carboniferous. Where are you? There it is. Standing tall. Car- oh, it's oh, like a scale wait. Tree? No. I know what it is. I know Kelly, what it is. if you find this right away, <laughs> I had my chance right now to come back. Man, where is it? I, here's oh. clue number two. It's so I'm dark. The oldest fossil tree in the hall. <gasps> is the it this guy that I'm looking at? Kinds of trees to evolve. It is not that one. Ah. Man, it has to be oh. Lepidodendron. Okay. I mean, oh, 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 is it? Is it a, not Ginkgo, what's wait, his name? What's your name? On the ceiling. Lepidodendron. I'll give you another, I'll give you one more clue and this this will give you a location clue as well. Okay. I'm a great example. This is a great example of how land plants solve the problem of growing tall to get sunlight and to disperse Sports. Okay. Okay. So oh. it has to be. It has. It has to be a scale tree. It has to be. Yeah. Like I'm, gonna you, I'm gonna give you a fourth clue, which is you're all in the wrong spot. Oh <laughs> no! Oh no! Okay. You guys, we're the worst. Blake, Blake okay. is close. Oh what? what? Okay. He's got, all ooh, right. Ooh, someone's closer. Wait. Oh ah. I How got did it. plants adapt? Who are you? Oh, adapt? is it a colitic salon oh, tree? Yes, that's oh, close enough, Michelle. So long. I'm so sorry, everyone who knows how to pronounce that tree. is correct. Oh, <laughs> dang it. Uh-huh. Oh. Correct and cor- correctly pronounced, so. I was we'll so pray. right there. Oh, boy. Now look where I am. Yeah. I'm not even close. <laughs> you actually are, Blake. Like, you are, you're next door. Uh, so, yeah, you, so you're still social distancing. That's obviously just the trunk. Uh, the tree leaves are actually a different case. They're called Archaeopteris. Uh, oh. And that happens a lot with fossil plants because the, the wood, the leaves, the seeds often preserve in different places. They, right. they initially will get different names and it takes a while to kind of reconnect them. Um, the key for Calixalon is that it, it, the wood is um, in some ways similar to modern woody trees. It has xylem in it, which is water conducting tissue. So it shows that this tree could bring water from the roots and uh, bring it to the crown. And uh, also that it's a support structure for the trunk. So that's how you can get a tree that this big that doesn't have to, you know, it, it could be on land and be this big, uh, be floating in water like kelp or something like that. Very right, cool. I have, I have, yeah, I have cool. one last one for you all. Oh, um, all right. <clears throat> all right. I can all catch right. up, Callie. I can Dang. do it. Okay, this is... Uh, Blake, just okay. hold on for the ride. Yeah. All right, so, uh, speaking on behalf of this object, I'm not extinct, 
nor am I a fossil yet, but I am a living species. Oh, is it a people? <laughs> no. <laughs> Where was Me? that? Let's go back to the ground floor. That's where okay, I am. I'm not extinct. Here. Oh, I know what it is. I oh, it. no. Is it, is it the mummified bison this time? <laughs> no, I'm not a person, but I did a play person. a role in developing the theory of evolution by natural selection. Oh, yeah. Finches. Finches sound good, but I don't see finches. Uh, how do I get down there? Oh, um, doesn't. Where's, where's Chuck sitting on that bench? Yes, I know. Oh, I'm getting away. is he actually it's... here? I thought y'all were kidding about that. No, no he's here. Him. Is it? Is it the finch on Chuck's shoulder? Callie gets it. Yes. <laughs> Wow. You're there welcome, Callie. Where I know. You wow. I feel like. Should we just put that one to Blake? Blake's, Blake's strategy of giving the answer but not moving to the place it yeah. turns out not to be the winning strategy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm not man. playing the long game here. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a good one. So, you found the Darwin's finch. so where, is, where is this statue? I actually want to see it real quick. Um, it's it's yeah, opposite we, of the uh, T-Rex. Almost dead center. It's uh, across from the T-Rex. Yeah, I'm at T-Rex and the last American dinosaurs dot. And then if you swivel around a little to the left, you'll see him sitting on a bench. It's a bronze sculpture. There you go. I see him. Nice. That is a, you wanted, y'all have wanted, good eyes. I, I thought that was just like. I to to Chuck here and his is important insight uh and the galapagos finches were obviously a very important part of that story um we got to see some of those finches not charlie's finches but galapagos finches when we were there and uh went through the ornithology collection um do you remember that blake that's awesome oh yeah oh my gosh that was amazing there he is oh man so yeah, i was finding sort of amazing that, you know he collected all these finches and or he did he collected all these birds you know, this one's a wren, this one's a this, this one's a this, and then you know, he started talking to ornithologists that you know, these are all finches. They're they're just very strange. It's a it's a wren like finch, it's a this like finch. So it's a, kind of an interesting oh, moment you can imagine having yourself in like light, you hear the light see the light go on. I know. I'm I'm assuming that, that Darwin had a few light bulb moments. I can imagine him sitting in his study and being like, wait. I think I've got this. I'm imagining him outside, but instead of an apple falling on his head, maybe it was bird poop, and then he was like, oh, the birds, and then, you know, it all. Right, right. Well, Let's make that the apocryphal story. You heard it here first, folks. All right, Kelly, do you get to announce yourself as winner now? I do. I do. Uh, so the final scores were, uh, Kelly, it's rigged. seven, <laughs> Michelle. Wait, other side. There we go. On my screen, at least. Five. Blake. One. <laughs> did Kelly get more points than everybody else put together? I did. She did. Oh. She is the true yeah, champion. champion. Correct. So right now, your oh. sign says Kelly Moore, PBS and but it should say champion of deep time under there. Oh, oh nice. The next we will make new business cards. Days. I will put that <laughs> yes. on my card. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We have a couple of more questions. We have about five minutes. I want to make sure we get a couple of these before we sign off. Uh, let's see. McGinnis would like to know. Um, oh, wait. No, no, no. Sorry. Wrong one. Michael Hamilton. Do we have plans for a Bone Wars episode? This has been asked a couple of times. Blake. We can do Bone we Wars? We have talked about it a lot and maybe like we just haven't figured out um what new is there to say about it other than like two jerks who almost ruined the field of paleontology um there's a lot of like intrigue and some compelling personalities and it also like a lot of science and 
people identifying and re-identifying each other's work. But I feel like this has been covered so well that I'm not sure how we could contribute to that. Right. Yep. And then McGinnis, I'll get, there we go. Uh, favorite paleo <laughs> news in 2020 so far? Hmm. Probably the That's Spinosaurus tail. The spy, oh yeah, the Spinosaurus tail is pretty good. Matt, do you if have any? If they had been on our Patreon stream, they would have heard three new pieces of news. Ah, good Just point, a quick Michelle. plug. That's Just right. Just a quick plug for Patreon.com slash YouTube. Nope. Patreon.com slash no. no. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long day. I used all of my brain to dominate on the scavenger hunt. And now yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Any any last favorite paleo news? I'm trying to think of one. Spinosaurus panel? And what else? Yeah. I liked the little hatchling dinosaur that had the egg tooth oh, the little, on. Little, yeah, the on little nose, nose thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. I, honestly, I, I would say th this is like the best time to be around for if you're interested in dinosaurs. I mean, the last 20 right. years has been extraordinary and it's going to continue for many decades to come. It was not the case when I was a child, so every year is like a Christmas year for dinosaurs for me. Nice. Nice. I know I just saw the new Nat Geo article. We're in the dinosaur revolution now. So we went through a few iterations of like, what dinosaurs? And so we're in another period <laughs> of that right now, for sure. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Matt, for being our master of ceremony. Thank you, Blake and Michelle, for competing against me. <laughs> oh, you can go back competing. Yeah, well, the animus in victory. It's a, it's a good character uh, trait. Uh, sorry, I I haven't won anything in a long time. It feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, you earned it. You earned it. National Fossil Day is like your what your VidCon or something. It's just like going it all is. day every day. Okay. It is usually I I actually I was I was going for a while today. Um, it started early this morning with some tours and then um, capping it off. So my, uh, this was a great wrap up for National Fossil Day. So round of applause to everyone. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining us too. Yeah. I wonder um, if anyone beat Callie who was playing alongside yeah. with oh. us. They should let us know. People at home. Yeah, yeah let us if know in the comments score. if you beat me. For sure. I want to know. She'll still be and, the queen though. Oh, yes, my crown. Um, let's see where where can we where can everybody find us real quick before we gotta go uh, Matt where can people find you well they can uh, no uh, they can't find me really in the way you mean on social media but they can find the virtual tour at the Smithsonian Natural Museum of Natural History website and I really hope you guys visit it's, it's a really good tour yep Michelle uh, you guys can find me on Instagram. If you go to the Eons page, you'll see my face and you can click on my tag there. Like, or you can come take my class. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you want to learn more that? about geology, earth history, I teach at Cal State Fullerton um, and I teach at Chafee College. So just come get some extra college credits with me. We have fun. We watch Eons in my class. Uh, my handle on social media is Western Digs, named after my blog, which I'm not really working on much these days. Uh, Instagram, Twitter. That's about it. Cool. Fossil Librarian, Instagram. Thanks, everybody. Have a happy National Fossil Bye. Day. Thanks again. How are you going to celebrate your new queenship, Callie? I don't know. I don't know. Get t-shirts made or something? Oh, <laughs> I like, are you going to make time. us t-shirts that say runner-up and then loser? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't make the rules. Loser, actually. <laughs>